do this. Hey guys, welcome back to Patrick Johnson. I'm Tackling Misguided. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to Tackling Misguided. I'm Patrick Johnson, and with me, Hunter Lobertini. All right, guys. Today we're going to be talking about Grozny. <laughs> we mentioned it in the last episode that we were going to do that, and uh, he went buck shit wild on the notes for this. This is going to be fun. So we're going to open up, talk about the assault, and then I'm going to kind of cover a bunch of fucking armament shit. Like the only thing that I really know. So uh, you with do that, know more. I, you know I know a lot. Of stuff. I, I don't give myself enough credit. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Well, the uh, the episode number fifteen, I, I like the the title. <laughs> bad news bears of urban armored warfare. Yeah, bad news bears of urban armored urban, warfare. Urban warfare. No. So uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about the assault on Grozny, and as uh, Patrick said, we're going to go ahead and he's going to delve into a little bit when it comes to uh, mounted stuff with uh, armor, because I know jack shit about armor, very little compared to him. Um, so we'll talk about some uh, some capabilities and limitations. We'll talk about some weapon types, uh, and this is all over the premise of the first battle of Grozny, which took place in December thirty first, nineteen ninety four. Damn. Aww. Uh, it was a New that, Year's. I insult. was. That was a year and a few days old. I was present. I was there. We'll also talk about some uh, friction points and capability gaps and uh, basically like uh, yeah, armored bl uh, blindly swinging a baseball bat and for a pinata in a nursery. So it's Wait, gonna, what? Yeah. <laughs> the Dude, fuck? How did wild. you come up with that? Wild. I just watched their videos repeatedly. It was like if you were to stitch together a bunch of military epic fail videos, that was the assault on Grozny, the first one. So Now, and you were mentioning earlier before we dive into this, People literally dress up in full fucking regalia and go out with airsoft rifles and reenact my, my, the battle of fucking Grozny. My brother in Christ, yes. If you Google or YouTube any videos for the first battle of Grozny, there's a couple British documentaries. There was a very good one uh, by the Russians, actually. It was called 60 Hours of the Mycop Greek. Brigade. Those were the unlucky bastards that mm. were at the train station. But it's mostly these milsim weirdos. They like get all decked out in like LARP. Yeah. And they have like helmets and all this equipment and they shoot like airsoft stuff at each other. Yeah. But like, they, yeah. they'll reenact specific ambushes or battles or weird shit. And then the other half of the videos are like Arma 2 and like these tabletop computer video games. And it's annoying because like you're trying to find footage and the footage from this battle is actually really good like for being a VCR videotape time frame yeah and a lot of the uh, radio transmissions were recorded they're like recorded and overlaid on this video um, but there's a, a, a video on YouTube called 60 hours of the my top my cop brigade uh, you got to Google how to spell my cop but it's uh, two videos in my cop no, it's like no? M A or M I A K O P. See what I did there? I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. Hey, we both have high school educations. I can't spell, so um, North Carolina public school, baby. Kansas. <laughs> all <right. laughs> Kansas. <laughs> all, all right, right, guys. So, all right. First thing we're gonna talk about: big movements. As he put in the notes, Pat lays down the long dick of the law. <laughs> No, well, you just said lay down law. I added that dick in there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the big thing that I, I'd like to know is I, I wrote down a bunch of stuff that was in the video, and some of this stuff is redundant, but it like you hear terms like AAV, LAV, IFV, APC, and then you hear what the e Russians have. EAS, e e EAD. <laughs> but you hear like T64, T72, T80, uh, the, a BMP, uh, a BTR, a BRDM, CSU, yep. 23 tactical. So one, one of the things that we had to do every, um, as a mechanized, basically mechanized infantry, right? So tracks, if you're not f familiar with, what, with tracks, AAV, amphibious assault vehicle, right? So AAVs are entire job essentially, which over the years has been kind of skewed and like, for example, Baghdad, pushing to Baghdad. Um, I, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I 
believe it's actually in the book, uh, Garden of Eden. Uh, Charlie Company of Third Tracks. That's the Bible. No, that's uh, the Garden of Eden is an yeah. actual. No, it's in the Bible. It, 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 yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, All right. So Charlie anyways, Company. Charlie Company uh, Third from uh, Third Tracks. They're in Okinawa. Well, they were, no, they, no. They're, no, they're all fucked up. No, uh, right. first, first was Okinawa. Where's third? Third is Cali. Cali. That's probably stationed out. Second thing. tier. Uh, first doesn't exist anymore. RIP. Uh, they haven't in a very long time. Uh, since before my time. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's only third and third and second why, tracks. Why would you need tracks in Okinawa? It's not like Paycom has a lot of islands. Mm. Is there Taiwan? No, like, I mean, we go out, obviously, like, for Muse and shit, we go out there. I'm General Burger. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Exactly. Well, this is before him. This is, like, uh, probably before. I Honestly, I it, can't remember. Yeah. We're getting off tangents. Sorry. I can't remember <laughs> when fucking, when uh, First Track disbanded, but it was a long time ago, and it was out in Oki, um, which makes sense for where it was placed at. But either way, um, so Marines in the, it was Marines in the Garden of Eden was the book. Uh, and I believe it states that Charlie, uh, Charlie Third, was the first Marines into Baghdad. Okay. Right, because there's a great fucking documentary called Severe Clear. That it's a uh, an, a lieutenant with Artie okay. that was attached to them as they're rolling through from Kuwait all the way to fucking Baghdad. Right. W was there a reason they wanted AAVs up there, or did they just manage they to have used the capabilities? Us, this is my entire point with saying that they used us inappropriately. They use tracks as fucking APCs, like a M1, in a fucking uh, desert, like an M113, like the army has. Mm -hmm. Big, they're the track vehicles now, they from were still, Vietnam. They were still used, but the Those Marine were, Corps didn't have an APC, and they're like, oh, we can use tracks. Exactly, LAVs okay. are too small. As that's a light reconnaissance vehicle. It's not meant to carry that's, a squad of infantry in the back. For LAR, light armored reconnaissance, yes. that's an LAV. That's yes. a wheeled vehicle. Yes, and that's the one with the Bushmaster. Yes, that has a Bushmaster on it. Now we tried what putting is, the AAV has a you, Mark 19, Mark 19, and a 50 cal. 50 cal. Okay. Um, that we tried at one point to put a Bushmaster on there, uh, and failed, failed successfully. The big, because the it, big dick energy was too gravitational. It cracked the hull. Oh, that <laughs> for, a, for an AAV, that's not good. It cracked the fucking hull. They're supposed to go in the water, so if you crack the hull, that's yeah. kind of bad. <laughs> so the whole, like, so AAVs, their whole, our whole mission is ship to shore, and then we push inland, and we are the like main, we're the main direct support for the infantry squads that are with us that we that push out. Yeah. So you and, don't just go from from the ship to the water to the beach. You push into the hinterland. Like this yeah. vehicle is meant to. Not only be an and uh, it's a, what, what is it's birth, AAV stands for amphibious assault vehicle. Assault vehicle. It was its birth was actually in Florida as a a man designed it uh, back in the 40s or actually in the 30s as a um, hurricane recovery. It was a recovery vehicle for hurricanes. For hurricanes. So the Marine Corps adopted that, con like bought the idea from him. Okay. We took it in the 40s and used it out the ass in the Pacific because, yeah. for the island hopping campaign because the Higgins boats yes. were flat bottom. They would get stuck. So, uh, we'll take Terra, for example. Um, 100 meters out from the beach, there is a burn, uh, not a burn, but a coral reef. Coral reef. So they were getting beached. The Higgins boats would get beached and get blown to fucking hell by indirect fire. Yeah. So the AAVs would hit that, and engage the over. tracks, climb over. Okay. Well, um, so it's like, so the Higgins boats were like John boats. They're just flat. Yeah, they're just flat bottom. Which, bottom-bottom. if you've ever been on a flat bottom boat and anything above Sea State 1, you're having a bad time. <laughs> Add armor and a bunch of guys who are... You're puking the, your fucking yeah, guts out. Yeah. Um, so, like, you have your amphibious assault vehicle. The the uh, LA, LAR uses an LAV, which yes. is a light amphibious vehicle or light... They think they're amphibious. Okay, they're not. They they have a propulsion unit, but they are meant more for so they're like a BMP. river crossing. They're like for a BMP. They're like yeah. a they're basically a, is... a Russian, which I'll I'll cover BMPs. Okay. Um, they're basically um, our version of the BMP. BMP has been around for a lot longer than LAVs have, but uh, if you ever watch fucking videos of LAVs trying to cross even New River or just a river in general, it's not good. Uh, no, they sink like a motherfucker. Um, so they definitely can't go two clicks out from the beach. Uh, but so they misused tracks basically since the start of the Iraq war 
all the way to 2007 when they got smart and realized, okay, I'm, if I hit a fucking IED with a flat bottomed aluminum vehicle, which the only armament we had is called Eek, and it's meant for what deflection. Is, what is Eek? It's basically these plates, these big plates that are about is this it, fucking it's thick. It's not reactive armor, is it? No, it's not oh. reactive. So you're just you're just slapping more armor on. Yeah, it makes the vehicle a lot heavier, and it's meant it's not meant to take a hit. It's meant to deflect seven six two. Yes. Okay. Um, so getting hit with RPGs was fucking us up. Uh, getting hit with old fucking Russian landmines. Getting hit with fucking IEDs yeah. was killing a fuckload of Marines and destroying a you know billion billions of dollars worth of equipment. Um, so they figured out in two thousand seven. Hmm, you know after fucking five years of doing this shit, probably not the best idea to keep tracks employed in Iraq. They never used us in Afghanistan because it was too fucking mountainous for us to realistically accomplish any fucking goals with a track out mm -hmm. there. Um, and even in Afghanistan, LAVs were getting fucked left and right. But what is an IFV? Like that's a Bradley. IFV right? is infantry fighting vehicle. So that would be your Bradley. Um, that would be a uh, striker. I believe I believe the striker falls into that. Uh, so they are meant, and even uh, for, even for basically heavy, even an LAV falls into so that, that category because it's meant for heavy infantry. Like they have infantry vehicles. Yes, and it's meant. That's why all your LAV guys, their MOS starts with O3, because they're all still grunts, but we call them Cadillac grunts. Yeah, they just you know, don't because like they to have walk. wheels. They're not walking. Yeah, they don't like to walk. Um, I, mean, I can't say shit. I had a vehicle. Uh, I, but, I don't like that they adopted the, the reconnaissance community's symbols. They, uh, you know how recon has a skull with three holes in its head? Yeah. Yeah, they slapped that on LAR. And, like, they're not, they don't have reconnaissance units within yeah. LA, LAR's reconnaissance. Well, and to kind of go off tangent on that, Sorry. too, uh, LAR is kind of the bastard child. Marine Corps is already the bastard child as it is. Of the DOD. Of, of the DOD. Our, with internally, LAR is the bastard child of Marine Corps because they think they can float. They can't. Uh, they think they have a big gun. Tank has a bigger gun. They think they're infantry, but they have a vehicle. So, so. they're like a, a drunk Marine at the angry ginger in Jacksonville. They're just running yeah. around trying to punch above their weight class. Yeah. Now, and don't get me wrong, I love my, I love my LAR guys. Um, monies, you're a fucking awesome dude. And I will always fucking drink and hang out with you motherfuckers. But... I don't. That's just fact. <laughs> I'm joking. I like the ba I like the bash concepts. Uh, I applaud anybody that serves their country, um, but uh, I'm not gonna out of I'm not gonna say I have the capabilities of something I don't. Which obviously I had no shit about this because I'm asking you. We did AAV, LAV, APC, uh, IFV. Yeah, because I, mean, I kind of covered APC during yeah. you know the whole uh, coverage of what an AAV is because that's what we were used yeah. as was a personnel carrier. Um, now, diving into armament, like actual, like Russian armament, right? Mm -hmm. So, when you're going through every, uh, we'd have to do these quals before we went to the range. And every mechanized unit has to do this before they go out. It's called AFV ID. We do, the Russians don't. Yeah, the Russians don't do that. That'll be very apparent later on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the whole concept of AFVID and which stands for Armored Fighting Vehicle Identification. Um, the whole concept of it is to basically get you attuned to, obviously hence the name identify, um, to identify enemy targets and what you can engage with your capabilities and your limitations versus what they can engage with their capabilities and their limitations. Now, so that, for, that's me like, so if I'm gonna, if we're getting into a gunfight and mm -hmm. I have a pistol and you have a rifle, I need to get closer to shoot you. Yes. But you know, hey, my gun can reach this far out. Yes. So exactly. I should not let him get closer. It's just bigger scale. Okay. So, okay. Um, and the things that you learn about, you you learn like all these small identifying minute things, like the difference between a, a BRDM and a BTR, a BDRM. Two axles, two wheels. That's the first giveaway. Mm -hmm. uh, its main gun is a 14.5 millimeter heavy machine gun. Its coax is 7.62, um, and it's apparent with the, the the hull, like the structure of the hull, uh, the wheels, and then even diving further into it would be the thermal signature, which mainly comes more into play with tanks. Um, the, the difference between that and the BTR. So BTR 70 and BTR 80 are almost 
the same. Uh, the they're both four by four, or uh, sorry, eight by eight. So they both have fucking four wheels on each side. BRDM has wheels and no, um, they both have wheels. It's just BDRM has two wheels ver or four wheels like four car wheels. Yep. versus a BTR, BTR has eight. Eight, four axles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's still the BTR 70 and uh, the earlier iteration of the BTR 80 both still had that 14.5 heavy machine gun, uh, but the coax was a Dishka. The uh, um, Dashka, 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 twelve point seven by one hundred and nine. Yep. And then the uh, the upgrade to the armament from the BTR seventy to the BTR eighty was a thirty mil. Wait, a thirty mil? That's what the BTR eighty has. Jesus. Yeah. For your reference, that's the same as an Apache attack helicopter. Yes. Thirty millimeter auto cam. Yes. Um, now, so when we were going through this, do you think? A lone AAV is to take on a BRDM. A BRDM. Yes. Just one. Just, just one track. One track versus, are we talking one BRDM? Yeah. I would say probably not, but I don't know any, I would say it's a track vehicle. It probably is not as maneuverable as a wheeled vehicle. Mm -mm. And a BRDM is not as heavily armored. Can, you got to remember, we can pivot. Okay, pivot, and we have <laughs> but, different things so in impl implication, you, like you were, our tactics versus their tactics. You were talking about the th the the weapons capabilities. Mm -hmm. So, 50 cal Mark 19. Yep. Uh, if you put like Safi or Slap or something in there, I think it could probably tear up a. BR. Well, you got to remember you're running it um, armor piercing incendiary. Anyways. Okay, and then you have 40 mil. Yep. So DP 40 mil. Now, which one are you going to use to engage? The 40 or the 50 for, I, for a vehicle. For a vehicle? A light armored vehicle. Light armored vehicle, I would say the 50. Exactly. And so For them, what do they have again? They've yeah, got 14.5 and, and a 762. Um, yep, and a 762. And that 762 isn't going to do shit against AAV. Yeah. Will uh, that, it will, it'll deflect off the EEC. What about the 14.5? Uh, I mean, that'll still do damage. Like but it, they can they can mobility kill us. So I would say the AAV would shred a BRDM. Yes. A BRDM would you're probably correct. get maybe a lucky shot on an AAV. So, and you got to remember too, you're playing hide and seek when you're doing this shit. So you're, it's not fucking stand off with each other. No. Yeah. You're you're, moving you're in you're in um, like the whole defilade basically. So you'd pop fuck out. So it's or three, if you're in hole defilade anyways, they're not going to hit you. It's three-dimensional. Yeah. Your, so your turret you're, would be exposed, but the rest of your vehicle is not. So you're, you're, yeah, vehicle. you're saying basically the ground, it would be like me standing in a hole and my head's up mm -hmm. instead of my whole body, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's what we would do for a uh, defensive posture. But on the offense, you're uh, you're trying to find cover anywhere anywhere you can. And you're never broadside either, so you're faking, you're fucking face to face with it. Now, where's the thinnest armor on most of these vehicles? Like the front and um, the sides, I would assume have a lot of armor. The back, not so the, much. Basically, your target area is going to be for. I mean, honestly, for a BDR, a BRDM, a 50 is going to fucking shred it regardless. Okay. Uh, it's going to shred a fucking BTR also. Would, would the tops of would they would tops of vehicles be heavily armored? Like if they were getting shot down. No. Okay. So that's when you could drop your fucking HUDP on them. Too. This will with, become with important. A, with a Mark 19. But the way that we have things structured, uh, the 40 is meant for infantry. Mm -hmm. The Mark 19 is meant more for infantry than it is the, vehicle. The ger gerbil launcher. Yes, the gerbil launcher. Um, as, as a armor, uh, like I said, as uh, mechanized infantry, uh, our, we cannot use the 50 per the chief fucking convention, convention. Can't use the 50 against infantry but you can use it against their what we can use it against their fucking rifles. their trucks their, their light armored vehicles their rifles their it's rifles. equipment you get right? trouble, you get in trouble for that because if, if i'm shooting a 50 at you and i don't even have to hit you it just has to, it, to the quote, velocity of that round is enough if it goes past you it's taking your fucking arm off to quote so. grand thumb geneva suggest geneva convention geneva suggestion exactly i'm not advocating war crimes here it's a joke people all right, <laughs> <laughs> but so we would engage B uh, to make it short. We would engage uh, a BRDM. We would engage BCRs, but and that whole scenario of being just one track, 
you're not going to be one track. No, you're yeah. at least going to be a section deep, which is four. Yep. Um, and you would be in, and the way that you would do it is successive bounding. Okay. Um, Yep. Okay. I can't remember what the other bounding term was, but there's two different types. There's uh there's sequential and sequential and successive. Su successive. So okay. Most of the time you're using successful bounding and you're literally just as a section bounding towards the target. Can I make an observation real quick? It seems like as the US, so we have an AAV, we have an LAV, we have an IFV, we have an APC, we also have Humvees. We also the yeah, Russians, the mat, the, the mat Vs, the MRAPs, yeah, the 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 RG thirty threes, the yep. RG thirty twos. When you look at the the Russians, it looks like they have BRDMs are are actually kind of rare compared to the rest. You have BTRs and BMPs. Yes, you see those so, all like way more often than you do. What we did is, would you would you agree that we wound up uh, making purpose built uh, purpose built vehicles like our aircraft? Yes. We didn't take one thing and say, now it's going to be all these things. Because uh, I might be wrong, but a BMP, they have a mortar BMP. They have like a, an anti-armor BMP. They basically took one chassis and decided to make like a, like a bunch of different kinds yeah. of these things. Now, that, even that being fucking said, it, what we used to do in Iraq too, if you, had, if you had fucking mortars on your track, you pop the fucking cargo hatches open or out the back Wait, hatch. you can put a mortar on an AAV? Yeah, we would shoot the fucking mortar out of the back of the fucking track. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, like I, a mobile fucking, yeah. like, I, so mobile fucking mortar. GMV, uh, uh, up armor, it's a- Not it's supposed a, to do that, but they did. The GMV was an, the, not GMV for what I'm talking about, what we have now. This 2010, we had heavily armored uh, Humvees that had auxiliary tanks and they had a different suspension and we had uh, 60s in the back of them, and we yeah. would shoot them. Uh, you couldn't go above uh, charge zero or charge one. I think it was charge one. Yeah, charge one. If you yeah. did charge two, we actually, so I'll, I'll save that story, but yeah. So, but, but you my, my point being yeah. that like we would do like adapt and overcome bullshit like but that. But you could still use the AAV for other roles. See these these BMPs, they were they turned it into a mortar system, yep. and it couldn't do other roles. And BMP, we would go against BMPs all fucking day. Um, T, T-55s, T-54s, still a tank, and I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, Trash we tank. would go against those just because they were older. Yeah. Um, and it would take a section to do so. Okay. Um, now, a, a track platoon against tanks. How much? How, Fuck no. How big like, is you the are platoon? Running. How big is the platoon for tracks? 12. 12. Uh, but that's not, j so that's your main assault force, which is 12. 12, okay. uh, That's track one through 12, Gunny's track being the last. Um, and like I said, uh, you're- You should put your captain in front with all the navigational- uh, He's in first section, but he's track I'm joking. Uh, We're good. Shout out to the Chateau ambush when somebody put the fucking dickhead in the lead vehicle. And he died instantly. Napoleon. And there was no succession. Um, <laughs> of command. <laughs> now, if we come across, uh, which we, we actually did this in Norway, which fucking sucked ass, and there's a whole, I'll, there, that's a whole story for another time, but we ran into a, uh, a company minus of tanks. How big which is, is that? Which is three. Three? Uh, a company of tanks is. Four? No, I think a company is two. Two? Yeah, I think, it, I think that's how they do so, that. Some of these no, units. No, platoon, platoon is two, uh, a company, company is four. Is. So. so they we ran into basically three uh, Norwegian tanks, and it's all notional, obviously, but we would have realistically gotten fucking annihilated. Yeah. So as soon as we heard word that over this fucking crest, there is a company minus enemy tanks over there, uh, we fucking tried to beefy. Like, yeah. We tried to get distance. Yes. Um, and th like that's what you do in a case like that, and then you call in. Air. Look, well, you get, that would you be get to a distance. You figure out what, what their grid coordinates are, yeah. where they are, and you call in fucking well, air. So uh, for us, that's anyway. crazy. And you should never use combined arms. And it should just be an armored vehicle with no infantry support. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gonna happen. <laughs> and this is in the nineties. This yeah. is not the sixties. Jesus. So off my fucking tangent about armament and AFVID and. All that. I mean, well, the, the Russians had a, a, a decent amount of armament back in the day. Oh God! But they yeah. they've rolled over. Like they're they're still 
they're still using fucking BTRs. They're still using B, uh, BMPs. Those, those those systems are outdated as fuck. And when you get to the tank portion, they the two best ones that they had was the T72 and the T80. Then they got fucking stupid. They came out with the T90, and now the latest and greatest, which was supposed to be the cream of the fucking crop for armament, like literally in the world when it came out, was the T14. And as we see in fucking Ukraine, Ar it's Armata? fucking trash. It's the Armata? Yeah. Okay. Um, fucking now, still the most badass. I just want to make a shout out to the fucking Israelis on this. The Merkava. The Merkava. Merkava. The most badass. And it's it's not really meant for tank on tank, but it will fucking smoke check another tank, is the Merkava. The Merkava 4. Uh, it's meant more for an infantry support role. Is that the one with the vehicle or the engine in the front? It has the engine in the front because they yeah. want to protect the crew. Yeah, instead See, of it being in the back. So they're yeah. looking out for their guys. That's just versus, selfish. That's just selfish. selfish. Why, would Why would you want, want the crew to live? Exactly. Should all fucking well, go out and so burning blaze. The only vehicle I, the vehicles that I knew as a, as a forward observer, as a JTAC, and as a special reconnaissance uh, dude. Um, were uh, light armored vehicles mm -hmm. that were not technically I, you, you could uh, so a Zeus or a Shilka, yeah, or uh, there is a ZSU and it's a family of them. Uh, there's one that has it's a ZSU 23 TAC 4 and it's got four uh, basically ZPU 20 millimeter barrels. If you've seen the movie Waterworld, where that thing is chewing up. It's like a four-barreled machine gun, essentially. Those are 50 cals in the movie. Imagine that in 20 millimeter. And it's mainly used for air. Well, it's mainly used for air unless you're an idiot who doesn't have radar, and then you just make a quad-barreled fucking APC that just shoots a wall of lead. And, yep. and you can see in Syria, in I Iraq, uh, a bunch of these Middle Eastern countries in, uh, in uh, Africa, They'll just take what was meant to blanket the sky with uh, 20 mil rounds and they'll use it uh, against cities and stuff. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how the ZSU was used and how the Chechens used the ZSU. Um, and they're referred to as the Tengushka and the, we call it a Zeus, but a Tengushka and a uh, ZSU. 23 TAC 4. What was the other one? There's the Tengushka and then there's the Shilka. Shilka. So I don't know what it means in, in Russian, but uh, a ZSU 23 TAC 4 was an arm, it was a tracked vehicle that had this quad barrel 20 millimeter machine gun or cannons, and it had a second vehicle uh, to help it out, but it used a K band radar and it was really meant for anti helicopter. Um, and then there was the uh, British Saracens. Those were a kind of like our Bradley, if you were. If they, they, it was both. A, it was both a. It had the ability to be an IFV and an APC, um, and then they also had uh, Simbas. And in the Philippines, I got to see up close what happens to a Simba. A Simba is a set. It looks kind of like a BRDM. It's a four-wheeled APC that has like a nose that comes up. Technically, it's supposed to be able to forward and some other stuff. All I know is that an EFP IED will fucking wreck your shit. Um, the French had something really small, but yeah, that was that was my experience with uh, outside of like direct action vehicles because we would use RG32s, RG33s, GMVs, and then we got the first set of Mat Vs in country, and we tried to put a curl system on it, and it did not work out well. No. But so you know, in your tracked section platoon company you know where people are at yep you know what vehicles have what you know one ve what vehicle has a 50 what has a 40 which one was the commander's vehicle? well we all had those we all but had you you, but knew, you knew you knew and you knew where everybody was yeah and you knew if you got in there hey it's this weapon system and you knew the the crews right yeah so if one vehicle was say destroyed and it had your commander in it, your squad leader. I'm, I'm just saying. The section leader. Section leader. The section leader. For, for, uh, for first section. For but. him and myself. So I knew of our four vehicles, not including partner nation, I knew which vehicle had our, our, uh, our corpsman or our SARC, our special yep. amphibious reconnaissance corpsman. I knew which one had SIGIN equipment. I knew which one had litter equipment. Mm -hmm. I knew which one had the SMA D or the actual SMA, depending on it. Um, I knew which one had the 60s. So you could move in between vehicles and it, the tanks use like a little chevron. 
Yep. And we would use A, B, C, D, or we'd use Roman numerals one, two, three, four. That's a very important thing when it comes to command and control because in gunfights, things are loud, there's a lot of chaos. Yep. But you always digress back to your initial training. So you know how to shoot your rifle. Now we're gonna incorporate how you can shoot on the move. At the end of the day, if everything goes wrong and you can't use your legs or you're stuck somewhere, you can still use your rifle. You still are using the yep. lizard part of your brain to do these muscle memory things. It's called classical conditioning versus learned conditioning. Do you think the Russians were able to do that? No. We, we, I, was about to, I was about to say, we're gonna segue back into how this applies to Grozny. So we'll, we'll go over, we've talked a little bit about Grozny in some previous episodes, but essentially what happened is around the middle of December, the Russians came down, they started pushing through uh, Chechnya. And what they essentially did is they had three armored columns, mm -hmm. not four, you, to surround a city on three sides instead of four. Like, so that leaves a whole ass avenue. The entire south. Yep. And the, Russian, no the Russians thought that the Chechens would flee to the south, but they did the opposite. They wound up reinforcing. Now, this was a part of the Soviet Union, so there are an abundance of all kinds of weapons. We're talking heavy machine guns, anti-tank, anti-aircraft. Anything that was in the Russian inventory was in the Chechen inventory. The Chechens had also fought in Afghanistan. They fought in Abkhazia, which is a, a segue war. It's a, a, essentially a proxy war. It was between Georgia and Russia. A lot of these veterans fought in the Georgian War when Georgia was having problems with two breakaway regions, uh, South Ossetia, because North Ossetia is in Russia, South Ossetia is part of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, fuck you if you don't like that. <laughs> Abkhazia um, is in uh, Western Georgia. And so there were these small conflicts. So you had veterans from there. These guys also fought in the Armenian-Azerbaijani war in the 90s as well. So they had a plethora, I hate using that word, a but they had a plethora of knowledge of, of Chechen fighters. They also, at the beginning, they didn't have as many Middle Eastern fighters. They had volunteers from actually Ukraine. There was a Ukrainian yeah. nationalist company. And then believe it or not, there were no shit Russian mercenaries with the Chechens fighting against the Russians. So that's not hard to believe. <laughs> We kind of talked a little bit about how they fucked up their surrounding, their cordon, if you will, right? So uh, the people we're talking about, so we're talking about where it happened. So Grozny is a city. They closed off three sides of it. We're going to talk about who was there. We already talked about the Chechens. The Russians were mostly conscripts. Mm -hmm. And I mean, these guys have a two-year term of conscription. How long does it take a, a person from when they show up at MEPS to when they hit the fleet? Uh, almost a fucking year. If, if you include the training yeah. and all that stuff, yes, it's about a year. You have boot camp, which is what, three months? For us, it's three months. Army's, what? Two months. months. Two months. Um, it, it, varied, it varies by branch, but then you also have your, your follow-on schools. MOS schools. Your, yeah, your MOS schools, if you're fucking infantry, you roll right into basically, uh, your, you, you roll into your school because you, your school you go, is SOI. You right? go into advanced, the advanced whatever. So if you're yeah. a rifleman, you go into more advanced training, which is the rifleman. If you're a machine gunner, you go to machine gunner. For yeah. you, where did you go for MOS? Uh, so when California, yeah, um, oh. California, my MOS was, my MOS school was supposed to be three months, but it was, it turned out to be four yeah. just because of the time frame that it fell into. Cause it also, it fell into like Christmas. Yeah. Same here. So yeah. I, I wound up going to, from Marine combat training in SOI East, I wound up at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. I did MASOC. That was over a month. And I think it was a month. I think it was two months mm -hmm. because we had uh mortars artillery rockets then the second half of our mos we went to coronado california and did naval gunfire support uh and close air support yeah and then i got to my unit and then i had to go through more training yep now we went through we 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 have we are a purpose uh purpose oriented military so you can't just grab one person and say go fix that aircraft hmm. The only thing you can do in the Marine Corps is you can, give, you can give somebody a gun and they know how to shoot it. So every Marine's a rifleman unless you have the AIDS tab. 
Yeah. The embarkation specialists, they wear a red little stripe on their red hat. Mattress. Sorry, DQ. Well, so <laughs> these dudes have a very important mission and you can't pull them away because they need to be able to unload equipment and get it to the warfighter. If you grab these dudes, that means everybody's at the front, nobody's at the loading dock. Mm -hmm. And that means supplies don't get through, medical doesn't get through, everything freezes. Yeah, and uh, you know, and everybody fucking makes the comments about like diff the different fucking MLSs and like, oh, you're you're and guilty of it too. But being like, oh, you're fucking admin, all oh, your paper pusher, all oh, your logistics, all oh, your su supply, like. <sighs> but they all have their fucking place, and they and they they all make the well-oiled machine go. Well, look, you look at the Pusan perimeter in, in Korea when they were backed into a corner. Everybody was used as what's called a PR, PRF, Provisional Rifle Force. They yep. had provisional rifle teams, companies, what have you. They were grabbing uh, mailmen. We used to have mail guys. Like, we, not just admin, like mail, like mail no, clerks. Mail yeah, we yeah. still have that. We do. The Marine Corps still has that. Is it an it's MOS? A, yes, it's an MOS. You're fist fucking me. No, it's still a fucking thing. Still like you to fist fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. So, okay. So I'll grab the loop. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to what we were talking about, the conscripts. These conscripts had shit training. They're only there for two years. So by the time they get done training and they get there, we'll call it just because it's Russian training, we'll say they have to have eight months, all right? So that leaves four months left for that year and 12 months left. You have 16 months of combat duty time. We have to get you to the battlefield and get you back. You're cutting probably a month off both of those. So in theory, in theory you have uh, 14 months. So that is not enough time to uh, have your force sustainable because by the time they're halfway done with their contract, halfway done a year, they've just gotten in country and you are starting on the next batch of dudes. Within the US military, Four years is minimum. It's usually yep. four, and for other ones, it's higher. It's six. It's uh, five or six. Five or six. On the uh, like calm. Yeah. Uh, commas, or not commas, but uh, fucking operators, right? Yeah. Their shits like they go and their, their schools like fuck no com techs. Com techs. Their, their fucking schools a year long before they ever hit the fleet. So we have these guys that are basically trained, and if you can call it basically trained, it's just horrific hazing. Mm -hmm. So you have a bunch of conscripts and they have warrant officers and officers. The warrant officers are used in this weird NCO role. It's literally a top down. If you can imagine in boot camp, you have your drill instructor and then 60 recruits. That's just what it's like. There's one guy calling the shot. Yep. Nobody has any information. So let's talk about what they had. When they, when they showed up and they had this coordinates filled with all these fucking conscripts, they had BMPs, BTRs, T-72s, T-62s, T-64s. Um, it's the, it's T not the 50-55. There's a T-55 and then uh, a T-60. I think it's a T-62. So they I didn't have the T-62 or the T-55. They had the next series T-60 tank. Yeah. So these guys have armor and they have APCs. Uh, they have small arms, they have RPGs, they have uh, assault guns, which is basically, it looks like a tank, but don't call it a tank because tankers get pissed off. It's basically a anti-tank tank. tank. Uh, a AMX 10 RC is what, oh uh, no, that was, so the AMX 10 RC was the French version of what you're talking about. So the, we're basically, as a, it's a wheeled vehicle with a main gun, the, and a, the, the gun, a main battle tank gun. It, the gun is designed to take out a tank, but it's not maneuverable like a tank. They basically, the the Germans took a 88, here. you keep going, 88 millimeter, uh, 88 pack gun. It was like an anti-aircraft gun yeah. and they mounted it into this tank and that's what basic, they didn't use that exact gun, but they were using field guns to take out tanks. They just made it mechanized. Then they had uh, artillery, and most of their artillery was actually tracked artillery. Yeah, yeah. So they, most of their artillery pieces ran with tracks because it was easier. Uh, and maybe I'm biased for this. I keep hitting my fucking mic. Um, maybe I'm biased for this, but I think tracked vehicles are better than wheeled vehicles in some situations. Wheeled vehicles are faster most of the time, but tracks are more versatile and more maneuverable well, that's why when in ukraine they had a 35 mile long convoy those were tire those those were tires they were mm -hmm. shitty tires where did the track vehicles go and the initial push into from the north towards kiev down to hostomel mm -hmm. was mostly track vehicles 
because the tracks you can't you can't say i want shitty tracks from china the tracks are on the vehicle you can't get a different type yeah like they're you, proprietary yeah well with the tires you can be a shit bag sell all the good ones and then buy some knockoffs and then you pad yeah. your pockets so they wind up coordinating the north the east and the west and the south of grozny is is open and fighters are flowing in there um at this time it's the chechen army is the chechen national guard they were actually soviet soldiers then you also had Mujahideen, which were holy warriors. And then you just had your average Dale Earnhardt loving motherfuckers. They were like, I, I don't know who these guys are, but they don't, these guys here, they look like me, they talk like me, but those motherfuckers right there, those motherfuckers are speaking Russian. Fuck those motherfuckers. Exactly. So you had a hodgepodge, but for, you had guys with overwhelming combat experience mixed into the ranks. The Russians did not have that. Guys finished their two years and they got the fuck out of there. They went oh, back yeah. to a normal life. So you actually had a battalion called the Abkhaz Battalion. They were actually defending the center of Grozny. These were all veterans that fought against Georgians uh, on the side of Russia for the secessionist region. So you have combat hardened veterans that have the same exact equipment. They, the, the Chechens did have some tanks. They had a couple track vehicles, but most of their shit yeah. got blown up by the Russian Air Force. In fact, the Chechens captured more tanks than they actually had or lost. It's the same with the, uh, with the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians have captured so many tanks that even with their combat losses, they have two new tank battalions. God damn. Or was it brigades? They've captured um, something like 200 or 400 tanks. Long story short, the Russians had three major columns uh, that came to Grozny. They started the cordon. On December 31st, they decided to assault the city. How long would you say it would take a unit to, I don't know, plan to attack Fallujah or Ramadi or Baghdad? How many- Are you talking about planning? Planning. How many do you think it, would you say it's uh, months, weeks and months? I would say weeks and months. And we would already have people, egghead people back here already developing plans for different things, yeah. right? How long do you think they took to plan out the uh, assault on, on just Chechnya? Probably a day or two. Two weeks. Well, two I, weeks. I, I gave them less than what they had. I gave four, them less. 14 days to take a country. So they show up. Genius. They show up. Do you think uh, because of your visibility, you should have some sort of understanding of where the roads go, navigation? Yeah, you, it's it, called reconnaissance. Yeah, like, you, yeah you well, should. reconnaissance, but you think you should have a map or maybe we would build these- uh, Terrain models. Terrain models. Yep. We would also build bigger ones and do called ROCs or rock walks. It's a rehearsal yep. of concept. And wow, we do I them, haven't heard that term in a while, but yeah, we, we did the, the same shit. We do, we do it for armor. You do it for infantry, you even do it for air. And if you use all of them, that's what's called combined arms maneuver warfare. Yep. How much combined arms maneuver warfare do you think the Russians did? Zero. Zero. So if I put it into perspective, Grozny is a liquor store. They ran up, they shot a bunch of rounds through the window, they put their gun in their pocket and ran straight head first at the cash register. That's Genius. exactly what they did. So they, Genius. they did this assault uh, on the 31st, the Chechens stopped two of the columns. One column actually made it all the way to where they were supposed to be. And they didn't receive any resistance except for some small, some small some firing. Small arms. So they don't have any maps. So they don't know where the fuck they're going. They're relying on people that have probably been in the city before them. So, all right, we'll talk about the uh, the initial armor assault. So we're calling this the mad uh, the mad dash down the Ca Caucasus Yellow Brick Road, with no infantry, no maps, or even radios, and no flying and, monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe the Russians uh, quit like halfway through the assault, and uh, they blue falconed an entire brigade. Uh, the line movement and mount with no uh, situational awareness. That's kind of ba a bad thing. So. When I say blue falcon, blue falcon means buddy fucker. That means like if you know there's something bad oh, and I know, you're gonna like, I know two or three of those fucking guys. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if you say, hey, I'm gonna go into this room and fight this guy, you two are coming with me, two buddies. That's three on one. Uh, and then you realize there's three guys inside and you're like, okay guys, I really need you to come with me. We're gonna go fight these three guys. 
And then both those dudes brain themselves walking into the fucking door, knock themselves out, and you're going against three people at one. Yeah. And that, that is actually what you want to have for an, uh, an attacking force should have three to one superiority if you're attacking a defended position. You always want to have more people. Yep. Um, so do you know how many guys were in the column that made it to Grozny in total? Uh, let's see. How many vehicles did we say out of that column? I'll, 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 get in, I'll get into it, but I just want your guess of if um, you were attacking a city and you broke, your, you broke your initial attack into three columns and only one made it there. Out of that one, if it's a mechanized, mechanized column, I would say it will... A brigade. A brigade. A brigade. How many dudes do you so think? So 160? Vehicles, about 200. Oh, there's 200. There's about 200 oh, yeah, vehicles. I'm way the fuck off then. Oh, there's more than 200 vehicles, but they they essentially lost 800 men in the first th uh, 30 hours of fighting. They lost 2,000 in the overall 60 hours of the assault. Damn. To put that in perspective, if you subtract the coalition casualties from Afghanistan, that's the entire 19, 20 years of warfare. That's how many we lost. That's about how many they're losing a day in, in, in Ukraine right now, the Russians are. Damn, they yeah. do not give a fuck about their soldiers. No, they don't. And that's why they're fucking losing. And so they use... And that's why they're always losing since Afghanistan. The way that you're supposed to use any sort of military unit is you're supposed to have some semblance of maneuver with different formations. Now, the formations are kind of generic. We have yeah. line, we have uh, column, uh, column, echelon, uh, echelon right, echelon left, wedge, uh, wedge, V, v diamond. Yep. Sometimes you can do a half moon, kind of like an arc. Yep. Um, and it's the same, and, it, and that, that transitions into, it's the same for mechanized too. Mechanized? Because like, that's not even, some, when we were going over this and I was, I was going over all my like armament stuff, that's something I, I didn't even, think about but that, that was yeah that was the thing that we always did too was you would, you would travel in wedge column staggered like that and, and and these these formations are built of even more formations so i could put a wedge or a echelon heavy left heavy right i could put those in front of my main assault force yep that is then then subdivided when you're in uh this is a city when you're in urban terrain the battlefield is 360 that means from the sewers to the rooftops. And Which is windows, also not fucking good for armor. Windows to the walls, to the sweat drops, drips down my, my balls. balls. <laughs> so essentially these guys didn't do anything. They didn't do bounding, which is essentially you have, say two people and we're gonna bound. One, we got A and we got B. A is gonna move forward while B is covering him. A is going to stop and they and will then, start picking up cover and then suppressing fire and then B bound but you're you're lapping each other so if a pushes forward b is not going to stop at a they're going to push forward a little bit more and you want it to be equidistant or an environmentally uh, uh sound yeah so, going off of the, the terrain the terrain right? and you're and, always as you're bounding you're also looking for cover and concealment as yep. you're doing that too but the problem with cities is cover and concealment unless you're using an entire building to cover yourself there's not much concealment you have long axes of fire you, and avenues of approach. So you have enfilade fire on these axes. So for weapons that usually are contained by the terrain, whether it be undulation of the ground or any, anything that would block the, the, the rounds from coming through like trees or bushes or distance, you don't have that. So essentially you have, as long as you're in the, the kill zone, which is essentially this entire long stretch of the avenue of approach, you're open to, to small arms fire and rockets. Yep. So we'll talk, uh, the Russian infantry jump in the mix, but they uh, cleared houses kind of like drunken zombies. Um, <laughs> That's if they if the infantry actually dismounted. They actually didn't. They would stay in their vehicles. They thought they were safe inside of it, like these no. BMPs. And remember, I asked like, "Where's the thinnest part of this vehicle?" And it's the roof. For a BMP, uh, for most of those vehicles, that's your fucking. 
and Mohammed is up three stories firing an RPG at the top yeah. of uh, the top of your vehicle. Um, there's a symbiotic relationship between armor and infantry and supporting arms. Like you're supposed to use those three uh, armor, infantry, artillery, or supporting arms, and then air. Yeah, you use so, all those things in conjunction. Did they have radios? Uh, yes. They had some. Did they have radios in all the vehicles? I'm going to guess no. Only the commander. So the commander did not have comms with the rest of his unit. Oh, fuck. So, like, they're trying to fucking, like, probably not even trying to do that, but <laughs> been in that situation where your fucking stack goes down mm -hmm. and you're in the middle of an operation, like, uh, doing a mount town with fucking conjoined forces. Yeah. All right. So, like, you, you got fucking infantry everywhere. You got tanks. And you're trying to literally just communicate with the rest of the platoon you can't do that yeah um so you have to like fucking think on the fly yeah. and like try to figure out your best approach because I, I i ran into issues like that uh a so, lot like where my radio stack would go down but and, you you had a plan yeah and your your backup plan is always hand and arm signals yes in that situation but you had a plan and you had gone over a re rehearsal of concept you looked at a map with everybody else and said hey this is what we're doing Technically, if you didn't have a radio and everything went perfectly fine, you could play either follow the leader, or I know where I need to be when I need to be. But yeah. if you don't have a plan and you don't have maps, now comms are even more crucial because yep. you are trying to talk each other on. And this got really bad because they were trying to use artillery without communicating with the rest of their units. They were dropping artillery on their own guys. Yep. And that's what would happen. And then they tried using to smoke to drop smoke to, to mark it. Well, the vehicles that could see the smoke didn't have radios. Yep. And, we so, and, and the age old fucking thing of uh, no plan ever survives contact with the, or uh, no plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. So you could sit here and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and you have you know, you have your fucking plan laid out. Everybody knows fucking sec third section is covering this side of the fucking town. First section is going straight up the fucking middle. Second section is fucking covering this side of the town. You can do that all fucking day. But the second that comms go down, it becomes chaos from, uh, for a large majority. Um, so I can only imagine that with one motherfucker having a radio. Yeah. So... You Damn. don't need a plan if you just go. <laughs> you just fucking so, send it. Send so the they were unable. Two of the comms got stopped. They basically the Chechens barricaded it and put up a resistance. This uh, this third column, which had the Mycop Brigade, which was uh, it's gone down in infamy as being completely wiped the fuck out. This brigade wound up uh, basically the like I said, the Chechens didn't really ambush them. So uh, I'm going to explain the anti tank team TTPs that the Chechens were using. The Chechens broke themselves down into small, very maneuverable foot mobile units. And they had an RPG gunner, they had an automatic rifleman or PKM gunner, and then they had several other riflemen, and then they had uh, sharpshooters, marksmen. Yeah. I wouldn't call them school, strain, school trained snipers like we have in, in the US military, but they were, your, they were good shots. Now, the difference between the Russians and the Chechens is the Russians they did, at the time, they didn't have snipers. Now, Russian sniper school is, I think, over a year long. Mm. But you had a precision rifleman. So what would happen is, is they'd immobilize the vehicle. And if they didn't get out, they'd just hit it again until it exploded. If they did get out and they started bailing out, they would wind up getting shot by either the machine gunner or the sharpshooter. Mm -hmm. And then you had your two riflemen helping them out as well, giving, feeding them RPGs. But these RPGs, they were called hunter-killer teams. They would basically move uh, or, uh, parallel next to the uh, Russian units, and then they would hit them as they kept going. They, yep. they basically stalked them. They were able to get above them. They were even engaging them from like the sewers. They were able to shoot them at track level. Um, the other thing is, is a Which Chechen- is catastrophic to a track vehicle. Well, if that fucking thing breaks in the middle of fucking combat, you're fucked. You, well, have, you have a stationary turret basically at that point. They, the Chechens essentially, yeah, you become a K-kill. Mm -hmm. You can only move your turret if, the, if that doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. So the Chechens let this brigade go all the way to the city center to where the train station is. And then they close the trap. And anybody that was outside of the turrets 
was getting sniped. And it was like fucking uh, taking a sledgehammer to a turtle. Like there's, these guys were stuck, they couldn't move. So with most of the, we'll talk about uh, the fratricidal tendonitis, which is the knee jerk killing sprees and wild amounts of dead Russians. Maybe killed by the Chechens, maybe killed by the Russians, maybe killed by their own stupidity. Uh, the New Year's Eve losses were bad. It was about 800 at the train station alone, 2,000 dead within, I, I said it was 30 hours. It's 2,000 dead within four days. They lost 200 armored vehicles that night. And the, that's, I already talked about how many we lost in Afghanistan in comparison. So what they did is they basically, they set this trap, they closed them. Now nobody can get to them. The other columns were attempting to send rescue missions, but they weren't talking to each other. They weren't coordinating their QRFs. They were essentially doing almost like an Indian run. They tap one unit and say, go. And then another unit be like, all right. And they'd hold them. And then they would tap them. And, and say, then they would yeah. go. And they were feeding like people. Like if you take a bunch of paper and throw it in a shredder, you'll jam it up. If you feed one sheet at a time, like a meat grinder, you are going to just churn out bodies. And this is exactly what happened over the next 96 hours. The cordon and carpet bombing. Okay. If you suck at urban warfare, just keep dropping bombs, even if it's on your own troops. Why ID armor when you can just let Ray Charles dump ordnance like slamming on a piano with boxing gloves? Essentially, these dudes just kept fucking flying in there, <laughs> dropping ordnance, like blindly dropping ordnance. I love, how you, I love how you put that, but. but it, it's, it's nauseating how many times they hit their own troops and they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Like one of the most sickening things to ever have in your stomach is to realize that you're getting shot at by your own people, like friendly fire. And in the US military, Big Eggheads and, and Rand Corporation have figured out that through Afghanistan and Iraq, about 12% of US casualties, that's not just dead, but dead and wounded, 12% were from friendly fire. Very famous one, Pat Tillman. I was on the end of a, of a blue on blue. We had an Apache helicopter straight our, strafe our lead element at night. That happens a lot more than you would think. However, in Grozny, they actually got into sustained hour long firefights at 1.6 hours. That's with their own fucking people. With their own dudes. Yes. Russians fighting Russians. Even the Chechens were just sitting back kind of like, okay. Mm -hmm. Let them kill them fucking selves And off. there's video of these Chechens literally with their RPGs looking around a corner just seeing tanks blow by them. And they're just like, what are they fucking doing? Like, they were so amazed. There's video of them arguing over who gets to blow up the next tank. It's, it's surreal. <laughs> Uh, you can definitely count on shit-faced commanders to seal off the city with three sides of a square. It's like half-assing a, uh, a shitty siege perimeter. Sounds good for everyone that's trying to escape. Essentially, they left the entire south of the city open. So while two columns are stuck and one column is now fucking uh, basically stuck in a mouse trap in the center of the city, you still have fighters flowing in. They're still bringing ammunition, they're bringing in food. The Chechens essentially set up multiple camps in the subterranean of the city. And we can talk later, but in another episode, they actually infiltrated and took the city back after the Russians had taken it through the sewer systems. It's uh, like a small city underground. They were cooking down there. They had field clinics. It was, it was amazing. Um, the My Cop Brigade over that 60 hours was wiped the fuck out. Like we're talking a handful of people made it out alive. Even the commander, he's, his, his last name was Savin. It was Ivan Savin uh, is on the radio and you can hear him talking. And this, I honestly, you know, I feel bad for this dude. He tried to send his wounded out in APCs back, but they got ambushed and killed. So uh, they essentially bailed out of their vehicles because they had been immobilized. They took up defensive positions in the adjoining buildings that were, uh, they were, they were short or, uh, they were like single or second story buildings. There was a five story building and the, the Chechens were essentially just firing rocket RPGs at 50 fucking meters, 150 feet into these buildings. They were, and these guys are APCs. They're, they're mechanized. Yeah. They don't have heavy weapons. The biggest thing they have is PKM. They don't have mortars. They have some grenades. That's it. 
And so they were holding, they were basically fighting in this house, the house or these buildings, the buildings were catching fire. So your building is on fire. You have wounded guys here. Nobody's coming to help you. The last APCs that you sent out literally got blown up with all the injured people. You're fighting basically trying to, to stave this off to the last man. Yep. Um, there was one Russian commander who was able to sneak some guys out. Lo and behold, they found that they were not only fighting Chechens, they were fighting Ukrainians, and they were fighting Russians. There were Russian mercenaries. Yep. And these, the, the Russians abandoned half of these BMPs. These BMPs were still functional. The next day... That's the thing that Russia loves to do oh, yeah. in war is like leave their shit behind. If you do that in the U.S. military, you're in more trouble than surrendering. Huh. Pretty much. You think I about think it. we had a commander-in-chief that just recently did that. Oh, no, no, that's $80 billion worth, and it's in Afghanistan. They're not real people. Get with the times. God. Sir. The fuck. All right. <laughs> New Taliban. Close, uh, so my cop brigade got wiped the fuck out. The, they basically reset themselves after they got wiped out and hit themselves with their own artillery. The Chechens actually managed to get to their third echelon. They were attacking FARPs, fuel refuel points. Yeah. Not only past the front lines, past your defensive perimeter, the Chechens were basically raiding the, the rear logistics of the Russians. There's a famous picture of a hind helicopter and the Russians just overran their position. Or the Chechens. The Chechens, sorry, overran the Russian positions. Um, overall, the Russians just had so many troops and they essentially started carpet bombing the city. Again, 30 to 50,000 civilians died. And mo a good like 20% of those are actually ethnic Russians. They didn't give a fuck who they were killing. So they wound up carpet bombing the city into rubble. I mean, it was apocalyptic. Dogs were eating bodies in the streets. The Russians never picked up their dead. The morale was the plummeting. low as yeah. fuck. Absolutely abysmal. You're driving through a place that you were supposedly was Russia. They should welcome you with open arms. You just fucking see all your buddies on the side of the road getting eaten by fucking dogs. There's literally corpses everywhere. It's apocalyptic. It's hell on earth. And in fact, that was one of the things on this video. A voice comes over the radio right before they did the assault into the city and says, Welcome to hell. And in the video, Guys, when you see a car on fire, it's one thing. When you see an APC on fire and exploding, rounds are going off inside of it, there's fuel everywhere, and there's corpses everywhere. The entire fucking crew of that APC is gone, and everybody that was in it, too. Yeah, you, know, you imagine you bailed out of your APC, you're fighting in these buildings, everything's gone to shit. That unit disappeared. So they wound up cordoning the city as best as they could. They sucked at it. People still got in and out. You could get rat lines in and out, supplies, yeah. me medicine, ammunition. They essentially just then just started to carpet bomb the fuck out of it. They brought in infantry. They fought house to house, street to street. And this took, it took, I think, almost two months to get Grozny. And they were not, they, Grozny was never fully captured. There were insurgent cells. They were fighting there until like 2000 and, 2003, 2004, Damn. there were small pockets in the city. Grozny's been rebuilt. Yep. To them. Well, 95, technically, because it was, well, it was well, new. Still, yeah. like, yeah. fucking 90s all the way to the early 2000s. Yep. Still fucking fighting. And so, uh, well, I like what you did here with the, uh, the run, run, rent. For, run for the hills. No. Oh, well, well, uh, Oh, we get running for run, for, we'll the run for the hills. I'll just blast through those. Which one do you want to do? Oh, I was gonna... Okay, uh, run for the hills. Basically, you go all red dawn and begin a nauseating, uh, nauseating IED and sniper campaign that puts Call of Duty to shame. Uh, we already <laughs> talked about tracked and wheeled vehicles. The Chechens uh, they brought the big dick energy. Uh, definitely leave small checkpoints scattered throughout the city after you've conquered it and no QRF and send all your dudes to the mountains to die in a Scooby-Doo let's split up gang moment. <laughs> definitely let the rebels send thousands of their fighters through unsecured roads and attack the, through the sewers like Teenage, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, uh, I fuck up recapturing the city a second time. So you're going to rinse and repeat everything that happened before, kind of like Joe Biden and stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're just and we're just gonna talk shit about yeah. Russian armor, which we've done for the whole fucking episode. So and this leads to our previous episode in Chitoy. And yep. right now we are well over our time limit. 
and I, I appreciate you bearing with me with my autism. <laughs> well, see, this time, like, like I said, he went full fucking regalia with this. He was, I was excited for Grozny. He was excited to do Grozny. Uh, I was more excited for the fact that you included me as far as Look, yeah. Patrick laying down the lawn dick of the law with fucking armament, which I haven't, uh, I haven't talked uh, about that a lot in quite a few years. Uh, so I'm a little rusty on it when it comes to like the whole fucking AFEID, how fucking uh, maneuvers work with fucking tracks and like the all, oh, not just tracks, but, but it's, uh, mechanized infantry in general. It's first class um, training because even though, you, how long have you been out? Four years now. Even at four years, you can still you can still tell me the specs, the capabilities, where people are at. That's an a testament to your training. It You're, is. We are a professional military. In comparison to Russia, that is not, and that's why they're getting their ass kicked yet again in another fucking war. They sit down to pee. <laughs> used to, like, it, it, it's kind of crazy. It used to be like, there used to be this whole like fucking... Con like this whole fucking conversation of just like shooting the shit with people and be like, okay, if we were to, who would you rather be invaded by? Yeah. China or Russia? And that was always the big two was China and Russia. I always said China because they got more people, but because of their fucking policies and shit too, like they, we go to war yeah. with them, they're losing they, generations yeah. of people. Uh, uh, so, and I was like, Russia, they fight fucking bears. Like, yeah. Well, they just, I don't want to fuck with those guys. They but now, this, like, they have shown their hand yet again. They just have a suicidal, dark thought process. Like, to well, us... It's not even, at this point, it's not even suicidal. Yeah, well, it's a meat grinder. Well, because you look at earlier in the Ukrainian war. Like, mm -hmm. where dudes were making fucking, like, um, videos or whatever. Like, TikToks or whatever. Like, Russian soldiers were, like, the basically... Chechens, yeah. These guys were like, no, this is now in Ukraine. Yeah. And they were like pleading for help. They're like, we're like, we don't. Oh, you're talking about the ones where they're like, we don't have food. We don't have weapons. They were begging they, the public they, they to fund them. Yeah, because, well, they were like, no, they weren't even begging to fund them. They were like, we don't even, they didn't know why. For the for the large majority, the lower mission, right? the lower guys thought it was a training yep. mission. Um, and no. they were running in there with fucking Mosin and Nagants. Yes. The like D shit that didn't fucking work. And they're getting fucking railed. The DPR and LPR, basically the separatist regions that are backed by Russia, they're wearing like Soviet era steel helmets yeah. and a bolt action rifle. The Mosin Nagat, that round, the 762 by 54R was made yep. in 1890. It's and still a 1891. fucking monstrous round. Don't it, get me wrong. Yeah platform doesn't work so much anymore especially yeah. if it's old as fuck bolt and broken to fucking pieces bolt and action with a bolt action and it wasn't even under automatic fire it wasn't scoped they were using this as a stopgap for their assault rifle mm -hmm. I, and i'm surprised i haven't seen more sks's they were using that fucking uh the pp uh, the the one that has the it's a pan fed magazine that goes on top you used um, to see it in world war ii where they were shooting from they were using aircraft. um uh, there uh I, I had one at the shop um, uh, DB-28. Yes, that's what it was. Polish. It's Pol a Polish. Polish machine gun. Dude, how fucked is and it? And that motherfucker is heavy as fuck. Unloaded, it's heavy as fuck. Like, it, it rivals a receiver for a 50 cal of how heavy that motherfucker is. Well, and it's supposed to be an infantry-born fucking they, they, machine gun. If we look at what Grozny is going on from Grozny... And we look at right now, like in Bakhmut and uh, Chernihiv and these battle spaces, uh, 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 so, uh, all the areas within eastern and southern Ukraine that the war is going on. If you just change the camo, it's the same exact shit. T-72s, yep. they have uh, AK-47s, AK-74s, RPGs, Dashkas. They have a new uh, medium machine gun, the PKP. It's a Petschneg. It's about 80% yeah. of this gun also works with a PKM, so you can cannibalize some parts. Modular. S SVD. But then you look at the, the Ukrainians. They're running M4s. They're running Tavors. They're running SCARs. Most importantly, they've been trained by veterans 
from here. Yeah, a lot of soft guys are going over and training. They're actually, uh, when I was in the initial portion of Q course, I worked with, uh, there were Ukrainians in my course, mm -hmm. the engineer course, and another course. I've had about five or six dudes just from my shop come in because they were getting some shit because they were going over there. Yeah. Um, and shout out to you guys for doing that. Yeah. Uh, joining the Foreign Legion and going over there fighting and training these guys. That's and the truth. That's that's helped them drastically having training from us on how to do things See, and correctly. People here, like people differ and we differ on opinions. For me, this is a fight for democracy. This is yeah. a country that, and we both agree on this part, it's a country that was invaded by a piece of shit fucking demonic Putin uh, and they made this lie about the Ukrainians attacking the, the uh, DPR and the LPR and that there was a genocide going on. It's all bullshit. The, the yeah. fact of the matter is, is that in, in America, well, and we have not always been this way. We've kind of been a little bad in the past where we've had our own pseudo empire. The whole spirit behind America is kill your fucking oppressor. Yep. You don't tax me, you don't take my rights, you don't put soldiers in my home, you give me a voice, you let me vote. And if you take those away, and you try to restrict my guns, you try to restrict my, my, my firearm liberties. ownership, my freedom of speech, that's when the age old adage of America is, it's like, give me liberty or give me death. Fuck you, we'll fight about it. Yep. And that's why I don't like a lot of these newer uh, progressives. Nope. They want to censor, like, you can't have a gun in YouTube videos or it gets censored. Uh, yes, that's actually the thing. I've been trying to uh, boost posts with the Instagram, and they won't do it. Cause some of them, like the one I posted today, uh, like the little promo fucking snippet for this episode. Um, they, there is. No I, I went to boost it, but it's of me and Bunny sh shooting. Well, they're not going to boost it because of that. Because there's a firearm. And we do this. Like, we do this as enthusiasts. We do this as people that want generally to get information out there that you won't, wouldn't normally hear in your normal milfluencer bullshit podcast yeah. stuff. Like, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of uh, military a veterans yeah. that are out there and they're helping with mental health and welfare. And we mostly like to talk shit and talk about tactics, uh, not so much tactics, but historical perspectives. Yeah. And um, it's which, interesting. I made that, I made the comment last time that we kind of, um, the, the whole podcast kind of steered that way. Um, I think bucket, let it flow. Um, I think it's doing great. I think the way that you're, you like, uh, the merch to pay for the stuff to do the show. Like we don't make any money off this period. Yeah, I'm, I'm like we, we actually lose. Yeah. He's losing money. <laughs> so dollars to do this. Uh, it's, it's, it's an out. It's fun. We might come up with, uh, some shirts and hats, uh, I, I really like designing team stuff when I was in the teams and that was something I was going to talk to you about. Yeah, well, I actually, I mean, I already have the first run of the logo shirts. Um, I still have a couple left. Um, I did kind of a initial try to see if, uh, if anyone would buy it. So uh, if you are interested in some merch for it, go to tacklymisguided.com. I've got green and black for the shirts. Um, I think I was running $28, we, $28 a piece. Can we do one of Ray Charles with boxing gloves hitting a piano? We can. We, we could fucking do that. Like, if will. you guys yeah, like... Put it, put it in the comments. Like, if yeah. you guys want to see that shit, or, put uh, it in the comments. Any of our artistic uh, comments that you want on our shirt or a meme or something, I don't know. Yeah. Fucking put it in there. Um, some of the dates, some of the times might be wrong uh, on some of the stuff because, like, we're not. I'm not going off like a PowerPoint, and I we both kind of like peruse notes. So essentially, yeah, we're going off notes. And uh, and then some of the stuff that uh, talked about in previous episodes are not exactly true or to spec, and that's because I don't feel like betraying my country. Like some of these people that are in the milfluencer, and I say milfluencer, military influencer. Yeah. Not not hot moms, milfluencers. <laughs> They'll tell you fucking everything, like yeah. to the spec. Yeah, I, I got a problem with that because I don't want some asshole in another country knowing how we do things exactly. If I can give them a warm fuzzy or even give them some information very that's base knowledge yeah. of shit. So everything I cover I'm is like a, a very base knowledge of how we do things. I'm a fuck boy. I'm gonna I'm gonna pump myself up to see more than what I am. And that's the way things should be for military aspects when it comes to operational security. I'm not exactly. a real fuck boy. 
<laughs> Not a real one. What? No. I mean, I am. Look at my fucking... <sighs> my fucking uh, vet bro shorts. I gave up uh, holsters for Lent. I guess, like, I would rather do that than give up other things for Lent. <laughs> All right, Shit. guys. Um, hey, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout out. Um, I did get an email from a gentleman uh, uh, but last week uh, thanking us for the podcast. I'm trying to get him to come on. Uh, he's a retired Navy vet, and he has uh, some stories from the US, USS Iowa. Um, and back in the 80s, uh, he lost 47 of his guys. Um, so if you're watching this and listening to this episode, uh, don't forget to respond back to me. I would like to have you on, and we can do a... Uh, we do a little through a powwow here and get your story out there and talk about it. I'd like to thank you because you have a lot of editing to do in this episode because I'm a fucking moron, but I really appreciate what you're doing here. Let me come on here. And I appreciate everybody that's watching this. Uh, guys, if you like something, comment, uh, share it with a friend. If anything, we're both interesting to at least listen to. We may <laughs> not have much to offer, but yeah. Uh, like this video, like all the videos, subscribe, and um, we'll catch you guys next time. Definitely be sure to keep uh, follow us on Instagram at tactically.misguided uh, on Instagram, and uh, you'll get updates from there. Uh, I still have to update the website a little bit more, uh, but other than that, guys, fucking peace and love, and God, it's great to not be a Russian. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go attack a city now. Oh.